Welcome to Well Crafted Studio. I'm here to help you live inspired and create with purpose. So let's get started. Hey, welcome back. So this is another tutorial on how to create stickers in Procreate, but today I've got this super fun little hack for you. So I'm starting with a canvas that's 1567 by 2371. And what I want to show you today is how to take an image or a photo that you might have and then trace it and then create a drawing with it. So we're going to go right up to the wrench and put insert a photo. So I'm going to grab a photo that I took earlier this afternoon. I grabbed a leaf from outside and then screen or took a picture of it. So right now it's got little dotted lines around it. So that means it's selected. So I'm going to unselect it by touching that arrow up in the corner. So we have our photo and we want to trace it. So we're going to go and create another layer that's going to go above that. And that's the layer that we're going to trace on. So we're going to go back to that first layer and just to make it easier for us to trace, we're going to go to the N on that and dial back the opacity by sliding it to the left. And so you can see how it gets a lot lighter. So that's going to make it easy for us to see our line that we're tracing. So we're back on layer two and I'm going to get the six speed pencil and I've got it in black. So we're just going to go ahead and start to trace this. So what I did do there is I took two fingers and I widened them on the, so I, I had two fingers on the surface of my iPad and I spread them out and that made it bigger. And then with them still on there, I was able to rotate the canvas too. So that makes it very easy to work with. And I'm using a Apple Pencil as a stylus, but you can use this just with your finger. She had a friend how to do that the other day and she was shocked and amazed by how cool this is. So I'm just going to follow the veins a little bit and let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to go back to those layers and I'm going to click the check mark next to the layer one and just see if I've got everything that I want on here. And I do. So layers, if you haven't used layers before, is, and it's going to blow your mind. Because um, what layers does is it gives you, um, it's, it's like a, if you think of a stack of paper, so one sheet on top of another sheet on top of another sheet. So at any point in time, you can take it, one of those sheets and work on it and then put it back in the stack. And you can shuffle the papers and, you know, it's all kinds of things. So what we can do at any point in time is work on just one layer. So right now we have our drawing on layer two and we have our photo on layer one. Now I want to get rid of the photo because I don't need it anymore. So I'm going to click on layer one and slide left and then do delete. So my photo layer is gone. Now I want to color this. Actually, let's go ahead and grab a pumpkin first. So I'm going to make some room on my paper. So to do that, I'm going to go to the little ribbony tool up at the very top left next to the arrow tool, and that's going to give me a lasso that I can circle around my image, and you just need to cross two lines, or cross at the ends, and that will allow me to select this. And I'm just going to move it down into the corner, and that gives me some room to draw with. So when you draw in Procreate, um, it's okay to draw big and then go smaller, but you don't want to draw small and go bigger. It just, um, you lose some of the image quality then. So we're going to go ahead and use the surface again and draw. And I think what we're going to do is go back up to the wrench and insert a photo. And we'll go back and grab the pumpkin. So there we go. Deselect. Grab another layer and take that inserted image and dial back the opacity. So just the same things that we did before. Okay, so right there, I didn't love what I did and I stopped and what happened is um, the program corrected it for me. So when you draw something and then you keep your pencil down, it turns it into a kind of a, you know, more a shape that's more perfect. And I want perfect because I want this to be kind of funky and more realistic. So what I did is I pressed the undo button, which is below the sliders on the left of your screen. So I went ahead and I want to do this over again. get those 
lines in the side. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So just imagine that I wanted to use my photo again later as kind of a reference. So I'm not going to get rid of it this time. I'm just going to go and deselect or going to turn it off. So I'm going to hide that layer so I can turn it on or turn it off. So right now I've got it off. So now we're going to go and grab another layer by touching that plus and we're going to color our pumpkin. And the way I like to kind of start my drawings is to use kind of a watercolor behind it. I'm going to grab a watercolor and now is when I'm going to pick some colors. So I have my palettes and I'm going up to the top to the plus again and that's going to create another palette and it says default so that's selected but there's no colors there yet. So I'm going to go to the disc and again it says untitled palette so that's the palette that I've got as my default and I'm going to choose some colors that I like. So I've got the basic hues over here and I like that orange. Say I want a little bit lighter orange. So what I can do is I can just keep grabbing different colors and different like values of similar colors. So I have three different pumpkin colors right here right now. Maybe I'll get a darker red. So you have to slide both of them. And then you just touch in that palette area. And I always like to grab a black. And then to get black is all the way down here in the left kind of corner of the of the circle, inner circle. I'm going to grab up here in the left to top, and that's a white. So I have my black and white, and I have different colors that I like. I think I will grab more of a maple color. And I just like to get different, get slightly different variations of the same colors. Although I didn't like any of those, so I'm going to go back and grab a yellow. And maybe a little bit of a green. Okay, so that's some nice colors to work with. So that's my little sticker palette. So I'm going to go back and touch that orange, and it turned orange up here. And I've got my watercolor brush. And... On the left, I can change the size of my brush, so you can see here. So again, I'm just going to undo those. And I just want kind of a wash of color. And I went way off the side over here. So it's pretty easy to undo. Looks good. Now I'm going to grab some. Oops, and I didn't get a dark green. So I'm going to go back and grab over right here a darker green. Just lay in some color there. So, orange and green. So, pretty basic. So, now I think what I'm going to do is grab a gouache and brown. And I'm going to actually go back to my palettes because I have stickers all set up here. And this is the one that I kind of picked all the different colors already. I'm going to add in some browns. And then let's go and grab some different tones. Okay, so when you do color or paints that are transparent um, or water, like very much water-based, so like gouaches or watercolors, mostly watercolors, gouaches are a little more opaque. So opaque again means it's just um, you can't see through it. So right now, I've got gouache, which is in between watercolor and something that's very opaque, such as a colored pencil 
or an artist crayon. So those are colors that will kind of just sit on top of what we're doing. So I'm going to grab the, actually let's go back and grab the artist crayon. And let's do a slightly lighter tone. And we're just going to draw that in to get some highlights. And I want my to be, oops, and that's too big. I'll just throw a little in there too. Then we'll do some darker ones. And then let's go back to the colored pencil and maybe do some really lighter. Okay, so that's looking pretty cute. Let's get some a little bit more brown into that stem. I don't love that. Actually, that's pretty cute. Okay, so liking that, that's looking adorable. So I think we're just gonna stick with that for right now. And so what I'm gonna do is move on to back to the maple leaf. So I've got my pumpkin, but if you can see here, we lost some of that um, original dark line. So, cause we went over it. So if we wanted to get that back again, we could select the layer of the pumpkin, the sketch, and bring that back by holding it and dragging it on top of our colored. And so now you can see how the color is below the drawing. So the drawing is right up front. So that's kind of one of those super cool things you can do with layers. So we're gonna go ahead and I think I'm done with the pumpkin. So I'm actually gonna select layer three and I'm gonna merge down with the other layer. So now we only have the one pumpkin and we don't need the sketch, or sorry, the photo. So we're gonna delete that. And then I'm gonna take that lasso again and I'm gonna circle it and I'm gonna minimize it. I'll just put it up in the corner. So we're going to grab that maple leaf again, so we're on layer two, and really what I should be doing is renaming. So we're going to do maple and pumpkin. Okay, so now we're all good. So I'm going to select by going to that ribbony tool again, lassoing it, bringing it to my center. And we're just going to repeat that process with the watercolor. This time, I think we're going to start with, let's start with a bit of green. So say I'm not like super sure that I'm going to like that green. Oops, and look at what we did. We actually did it on top of our drawing. So what we're going to want to do is just undo out of that and go ahead and create another layer. So now I'm gonna go with my green because I've got that layer on. Oh, the nice opacity was down a lot. So on the side of the sliders, there's the brush and then there's the opacity. And sometimes when you hit that undo button, you hit the opacity as well. And that happened. So say I'm not like super crazy about this green, but I'm not sure. I'm just going to leave it for now. I'm going to start another layer. And then I'm going to go grab another color. But this gives me the option of going back and getting rid of that green if I don't like it. So again, one of those, you know, very cool layery things. So I like that. But... I can click off on the green layer and see, do I like it better? Do I like it worse? And really I'm kind of okay with it. So we're just gonna keep that for now and let's go ahead and grab, oops. Let's go ahead and grab a gouache again. Let's get a darker, more maple color going.
Then we'll do the under sketching. I've got the artist crayon again. Let's bring some yellow. Let's make that one a little bit bigger. The brush. So you can see there, that's like a fun little maple leaf thing going. So let's go back and grab a little bit of a brown. Oops, and that's. So we want to go back to color pencil. Get that stem in there. If we want. Maybe we'll do a little chalk over it. Okay, so let's go back and see, you know, do we like it better? Do we like it, you know, what do we think of that green? And really, I think I'm going to keep the green. Oh, well, yeah, let's keep the green. And now let's just go ahead and get those edges a little more. There's actually green in them in nature, often underneath the red, which is kind of cool because those are complementary colors. So when you're coloring, you kind of want to go with where the shape looks like in nature. So rather than going up and down the whole time, so the shape of the maple leaf is kind of coming up from the stem. And so I'm going to kind of follow that with my marks. Okay, so let's go back and grab the sketch. And we're going to drag that over. And there we go. So let's go ahead and merge those down. And we just have our two again. So what I want to do is fill this whole sheet up. I've got a pumpkin and I've got a, a leaf. So what I'm going to do is select this leaf again. And now I want to kind of duplicate it. So what I could do is go and I could actually just go ahead and duplicate the layer like so. Let's see. Duplicate like that. And that works great. And then I would just go ahead and select and drag it down and size it and go to a different layer and select it, drag it down. Oops. So if you're unsure about what layer you're on, you can go ahead and just click that part off or the little button or the little square off. Highlighted. Okay, so I've got three that look alike, which is cute, but now I need to fill up the rest of my space. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste. So I have another one again, but this one. So when you cut and paste or copy and paste, it automatically creates a new layer for it. So when it says from selection, that's the one that we just did. So there's that one again. And what I wanted to show you guys is down at the bottom, when it's selected, um, or when you have a shape selected, there's the flip horizontally, the flip vert vertically, and then there's also this little green knob, which helps me kind of hold on and turn, I can turn with it. There's the free form again, which if you drag any of these, it'll change the size and proportion. Or if you have uniform on, then it'll keep that proportion. If you go to warp, you can really start playing with the shape. So you can take your initial sketch that you did, or your drawing from the traced photograph, and you can get like crazy cool with it. And it won't even look like the same thing. So now we've got a leaf that kind of looks a little. So I'm going to go back to uniform and 
kind of like so. But before I actually go ahead and duplicate this, let's make it a little different than the other ones. So we're going to go in with a real dark red. So I've got another layer. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is duplicate, duplicate three times, and go ahead and select, and bring that down, so we'll put it up here. So I could have sized it and then duplicated them. That would have worked too. Okay, so now I'm going to take my pumpkin and I'm going to do the same. Okay, so that's looking pretty cute, but there really isn't enough room between them to create stickers right now. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and select everything. Make them a little smaller. And then, let's see, we'll go ahead and grab all the leaves. Oops, the pumpkin's still up. I'm just going to move those a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to basically arrange these all the way I want them. So I've already got some that are started over here. And they're all ready to go. So what I did to get the black background was I had turned off the background color. And that makes the, tra the background transparent. So the reason you want to do that is you want to be able to create a... To get that border around the sticker, you want to have kind of a white border. And in order to do that... I'm going to go ahead and add another layer and that's going to go all the way underneath all of your images on top of that background layer. We're going to grab a airbrush in the hard and white and then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to put that border around our images. I have to fill in the whole area behind it. Okay, so you can do it that way, or you can make your brush bigger, and you could just do this. Okay, 
That needs a little more. So there you've got a nice round edge. Or we can go ahead and slightly smaller. So that same trick before where you draw you draw a shape and you don't pick up your your stylus. And what happens then is that Procreate cor corrects the shape. And so you're able to manipulate it a little bit. And then if you go to edit shape, it has little nodes that you can kind of pull in. So that gives you that super smooth cut out around it fairly easily. So if we wanted all like round circles, we could do that. But I'm gonna work on this a little bit and I think I'm gonna go ahead and do just the shapes, the, the more organic shape. So I'm going to do that, and then when I come back, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've got the background, um, the white behind all of those, and so they're ready to go. The transparent background is still there. So we will go up to the little wrench and go to Share, and it's going to give us the option of sharing as a PNG, and we can just go ahead and save that to our files and images. And that's all it is. So from beginning to end, that's what you need now to take it to Cricut and bring it into Cricut. So I just wanted to show you guys quick. So that same process that I showed you, I created some more stickers. So you can see here how it's just so easy and it's so fun and you get such a great look. So this set, it's a sticker set and it actually will be available in my new well-crafted studio shop. So I hope you'll check those out. Thanks for watching this tutorial. And if you found it helpful, please like, comment, or subscribe below. And for more tutorials like this, visit wellcraftedstudio.com.